hello everyone welcome back to my channel thank you to my subscribers welcome to the newcomers i hope you like what you see and if so help support the channel by clicking subscribe button clicking the bell notification to be notified on all my uploads and share comment give it those thumbs up to circulate the video and tag me if you're creating some of my pieces. I thank you so much, everybody, for your big support and your beautiful comments. I'm very grateful and humble by it. I can't thank you enough. Thank you to every single one of you in the groups that have been following me and have subscribed throughout the groups. I really appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. Um, I was creating this last piece for uh, the set that I just did on my last video for the coffee, tea, sugar, flour covers. So um, I have, as you seen on the picture at the beginning, um, a glass jar that I put all my big spoons and big forks and spatulas and all that inside of the glass jar. So I wanted that to be part of the set for the tea coffee sugar jars so obviously because there's spoons and forks coming out of that jar there's no lid to it so i didn't do the lid so it's the same concept as i did same stitch same everything which i'll leave in the description box below there's no point of doing tutorial on it when i just finished doing the same tutorial with the other sets now the only reason why I'm doing this little video is I was actually doing the final step on my last row and then I thought oh wait a minute but there might be some people that use the same way as I do putting their spoons and spatulas and whatever inside of either a metal uh, jar or a glass jar or plastic jar or whatever and why not and show them that just because it doesn't have a cover doesn't mean that you cannot decorate the pattern itself so I was doing the last row and then I thought, well, I might as well do the video on it. Some people might want to do it this way. And why not, right? So I took it down as I was almost done. And I'm going to redo it again. So what I'm doing basically is I'm creating an, uh, an edge, you know, for this pattern. And I have all the colors that meet up with the set. So you would do your whole pattern, which I'll leave the link below in case some of you haven't seen it yet. And on the last row, of course, we have the squares, right? We have these empty squares for the length of the jar. So I'd go in from the inside of the square. Okay. Might as well get you close. And I would do a single. Okay try to hide my thread at the same time and two chain uh, one chain sorry single and one chain and then we do two more double crochet in here so it'd be considered like three double crochet now the row underneath has three just below has three double crochets I'm gonna go and grab the middle from the front not inside but the front and I'm just gonna pull my needle through the middle and close it in with a single crochet I'm gonna do the three double crochets again coming back in where I started the three double crochets here okay so I'm gonna do one all in the same place two and I'm gonna do one chain and I'm gonna come down and close it in with single exactly same thing as we started from the beginning I'm going to walk through I call it the walk through the next empty square and do one single one chain again I'm going to do one two double crochet I'm going to come from the front I'm going to grab right in the center of my double crochet there from the, the previous row and I'm going to do a single and then I'm going to come back up 
where I have my double crochets, okay, and then I'm going to do two double crochet. I guess a little bit tricky because we're coming back up, right? But not hard at all, very simple. So we got two, one chain, and one single will make three. I'm going to do one more just so I can turn that around so you can see it. So I'm going to get you even a little bit more closer. So we're going into the empty space next square, single, and one chain. We're going to do two more double crochets in here. And you're going to face it to the front. So this is the front. And as you can see, just right underneath your square, you have your three groups. So you're going to go right in the center. You're going to pull through it. You're going to do your single. And then you're going to come right back into where you have your double crochets. And you're going to do your double crochet. I know it tends to pull everything because you're coming back up. So it's always the first one here. That's a little bit tricky. And then you do a second double crochet. And your third one is one chain and one single. So I'm going to show you when we turn our pattern. So this is how it's going to look like. It gives it that nice little border all the way around. I'm going to do a few more. And then, of course, it will take the string to tighten up loose ends. Let me just pull my thread here from the leftover brown. I can tuck it in between these stitches. Okay. So we go over to the next space. Single one chain. Now, like I said, you have it right underneath. The only thing is we're going by the front and not by the back, right? So we're going to do two more double crochet. Now, if your stitch is too tight and you say, yeah, Maggie, but it's pulling too much, then give it a chain. If it pulls too much, it doesn't change anything. It just gives it more comfort to the pattern. So we're going to move to the front where the three double crochets underneath from that square is. We're going to go in the middle of the middle one. We're going to do one um, um, good God, I can't even think of the name. Single. Sorry about that. And again, if you find that it's pulling too much, you could give it another uh, chain stitch and come back and finish up the double crochet. But what I find is it's going to give it a line, you see? So that's why I don't, you can do it if you want only lines. That's why I don't do the line, do that one stitch, because I want it to be like a full little design here, you know? So I, even though it's a little hard climbing from here to, the, to where the other double crochets are, uh, it's only a little bit hard, the first double crochet, the other ones, they go in easy already. So we have the two, one chain, and we're going to come in and close it with single. So basically, you're going to have this effect. Just let me back it up. And of course, it's going to make more sense once... Um, Everything is pretty much done all around. Now, of course, there's going to be this little space here in between. In between these little loops. And this is where I'm going to put my string through so I can, with a pearl, so I can hang it and tie it so it can stay secure on the, uh, on the jar. Okay? So that's just... A little trick, but then again, you can do it whatever way you think is comfortable or do nothing, put the string only on. But I'd like to have a pattern 
the same way uh, with colors and designs like I did for the set for the sugar and stuff. Whoops, what am I doing? Okay, so we did a single, one chain. We're going to do two double crochets. Like I said, you can give it a chain if you like. If you find it's too, it's pulling too much because your stitch is too tight, you can give it a chain and close it in with single. Come back into the top and then do your double crochet. Of course, the first one always pulls. And then your second, which is easier, one chain and close it with single. I think it looks much nicer and cute, gives it that nice little effect. Now, of course, if you're doing different colors, uh, let's say cream, white base, and then you do red, it's almost going to look like strawberries. It's going to look beautiful. So you can play around with the colors also. Okay, single, one chain, two more um, double crochet. And like I said, you can do one chain or you can just go direct into the middle, whatever uh, works for you. Come back into the square where we have the three double crochets and proceed with two double crochet, one chain in the same space. We're going to close it with single and go directly into the next square with single and one chain, two more double crochet, proceed in the middle, come by the front, grab it, close it with single, and come back up into your square and do your single, uh, your double crochet, sorry, two double crochet, one single, uh, one chain and one single. My, I'm getting all mixed up with my codes today. What's wrong with me? And this is what it's going to look like. I think it looks really pretty. So I'm going to finish my roundup. It's going to be a very, very short video. I'm going to do my chain. I'm going to put my pearl. And I'm going to show you how it looks at the end. And I'm going to dress it on the glass jar. Take pictures and do a little filming. Also with the rest of the other set that's there. So you can see how it looks next to the stove. Okay. So I'll be right back. I'm just going to finish up this round. Okay. So I pretty much finished all of my... Poor thing is all squashed in. All of my uh, round. Okay. And I did 130 chain stitch and I left some thread before I started my chain so I can put my pearl and a bigger piece at the end if I need to add more stitches. Now, to make it easier to put the string in, you come from the inside and you can just pull on it like that. And then you would have to bring it out and then pull it again on the back here like that so nothing to it very simple pretty much all you have to do grab the next one Of course, you have to be careful when you're pulling so you don't pull on the stitches, just like that. And then go to your next one here. And best way really is not even on the stitch, it should be on the string that you left behind. So you don't pull, I oh, got the wrong one in. So you don't pull on your on your stitches okay so a little bit of string you left you just come in the next space well very very simple wrong hole again did in the bottom hmm it's one of those days you know where your brain sometimes 
doesn't function. Okay, so very simple. Just come into the next one and like that. So it's hidden at the same time. And then we'll pass it through the front once we've done all of going around. And once I get to the end, I'll show you how we're going to leave it hanging here so we can have the pearl hanging. Okay, so I pretty much got it all in there. Turn it this way. Now, I'm going to pull my string to the front. Okay, and I'm going to pull it underneath here. Actually, I need to overlap it here. Okay, so I'm going to overlap it here and bring it to the front also. So very simple. So you have both strings on the front like that, or you can have one on each space here. Okay, you see it's like this. Well, if you don't want to have them together, you can have it like this. It's very nice like this too. I'm just going to pull my string. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and measure it, and I still have string left to put my pearl. I'm going to go measure it, see if it's perfect um, fitting. And if it is, then I'm going to put my pearls and dress it up. And I'm going to use the yellow one. Okay, let's get these pearls on here. Sometimes they go in easy and some other times it's a little bit harder depending upon the type of thread and the hole. Okay, so we managed to get it. Now we're going to push it all the way close to, or even you can pass it a bit because it, you know, depending upon your size of your, of the hole of your bead, mine fits, passes through. You want to make that knot firm, very close to the edge here by holding and pulling. So you know that this is not going to go anywhere. And you need to knot it at least two, three times to make sure that that knot is thick enough that it doesn't um, it doesn't go through the hole at all. So I'm going to knot it one more time just to be secure. And I'm going to knot it just right over where the knot is already, just behind it, just to make sure that I'm not going forward with this knot. So I think this is perfect. This is not going to go anywhere, as you see. And then you would cut the excess off. Oops. We know that's not going to go anywhere. Now we're going to do this one. Try to roll here the ends a bit. Okay, that one went easier. So I'm just going to pull a little bit on my string here. I'm going to hold it. And I'm going to pull right to the edge of my pearl. And then re-knot again. I'm going to hold it again, so I don't want it to run to the front. So 
that's two. I'm going to do one more. Better be safe than sorry. As they say, right? And and it should be good. Now you cut the excess off. Okay, I'm going to go measure it and be right back. Okay, you guys, so I've done my flower. I'm going to glue it on. Now, normally you would have this pattern, put a piece of paper inside or a carton. When you're gluing it, it doesn't go through. Don't do it just on the glass, okay? Um, I'm used to doing pretty much a little bit here and there without compressing too much. And just putting it a bit here. Just enough to stick it on so I can give it a few stitches. Anyway, so that does it for this tutorial. I'm going to have it on display with a few pictures and the rest of the other pieces are in the kitchen already. Thank you so much everybody for being part of this journey. Please give it those thumbs up to help circulate the video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Thank you everyone. Until next time. Bye-bye.